Hi, my name is Hanna Reinikainen. And I'm Lia Hietala. And we are the directors of the film Always Amber. Alltså om jag levde på en öde ö med mina vänner då skulle det inte finnas några normer eller någonting sånt överhuvudtaget. Och eftersom min dysfori är väldigt social mm. så skulle den väl vara mycket, mycket, mycket mindre. Mm. Jag tror jag absolut. Mm. Ja. Fast nu lever jag inte på en öde ö. Mm. <laughs> så nu måste jag anpassa mig ja. till världen runt omkring mig. Ja. Ibland... Så får jag höra som jobbar med det här att vi inte ska behandla några personer under 30 alls för de är för omogna att ta ställning till det här. Mm. Eh, vad tänker du om det? Alltså... Fast jag fattar inte vad den här människan skulle vinna på att jag skulle må dåligt ända tills jag är 30. Nej. Det förstår jag inte. Nej. Hi, mm -hmm. welcome to the Teddy Award. My name is Jean Borbobak and we are discussing the film Always Amber with the filmmakers. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. Thank we are very you. happy to have you here. Um, so let's talk about Always Amber, uh, the film. Um, I was wondering what was your drive behind telling this particular story and how did you find the protagonists who are at the focus of the film? Like our first mission when we started working on this film was to uh, make a film about friendship, yeah. especially friendship in the teens, which could be very like identity building and very emotional. So uh, that was our like mission from the beginning, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we wanted to add the queer perspective uh, of uh, following uh, people that are queer, but not like focusing on the struggle of being queer, but to yeah. focus on the relationship between them. And then Hannah met Amber and Sebastian during another shooting of yeah. another film. I just like fell for them because they were so. Um, they seemed to have that like sym symbiotic kind yeah. of friendship, and they were just like a perfect fit for us uh, in our. Uh, idea of how we wanted this film to be, yeah. so uh, yeah. and they were very, very nice to each other as well, which was, yeah. So was that good. was, yeah, that was like the main, like or the 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 first like seed to the film, yes. and then uh, obviously they broke up as friends. So then the film continued in another direction, yeah. but yes. that was like kind of the the starting point of the film. Right. Yeah. Um, then let's talk about this friendship because, as you say, they obviously from from the film um, it comes through that yeah they have they they break up in the film, but before that it was a very utopian kind of relationship and I think that's something that it's quite rare to see um, regarding uh, regarding queer people in, in cinema. So can you talk a bit about that that part of their relationship and it was still like this utopian ideal friendship? I mean, they were they were both sharing a um, uh, a way of uh, of not identifying with the with the the norm of their gender. Yeah. So uh, they shared that kind of also safe space where they could talk to each other about it. And uh, before they broke up, they had this kind of idea to to go to the transgender care clinic in Stockholm, Anova, together at the same time and be each other's like mental support. Uh, and uh, for that to like uh, break just before they both kind of like started at the Anova yeah. uh, was uh, uh, very very hard for both of them yeah. uh, in the film particularly like for Amber that we follow but the the they've known each other since they were like seven they they went to the same like school same class uh -uh. and uh, and Sebastian was definitely some kind of um, Almost a role model yeah. for Amber mm, yeah. because um, Sebastian was the first of them to come out, and it was like it was very important for Amber to have like that kind of support. I think their safe space is was like very very important. It's also quite rare to have that kind of a safe space when you're that young. You're Certainly. like yeah, to find, find that, someone yeah. that you're so similar to and thinking about the same questions mm. that 
that someone else is doing. And, and for like, for Amber, that Amber, for example, is saying in the film, is that, oh, but Sebastian was one of them, the first people to say that, okay, but we can try a dif different pronoun if you yeah. want to. We can yeah. change that if you want to try stuff out. It's okay to explore yeah. mm. and uh, to not be certain on how you want to perceive yourself or how, how do you think of yourself and, yeah. and that it's fluid and that it's okay to try. And right. Yeah, that was like super yeah. important, I think, for, for yeah. both of them. Yeah, and this, this portrayal of, of the fluidity of their identities, um, I think what was very unique and interesting about it is that it doesn't meet uh, any kind of severe hostility which is definitely not a common trope of telling queer stories. Um, so how did this idea come about? Was this something that you, that you felt from their real life experiences or was this something that you deliberately wanted to emphasize and it was, it was something that you really wanted to put to the fore in the, in the film? Yes, it, it was something that we actually chose so to because was, we wanted to portray that. Yes. We wanted to portray like a new generation of youth people growing up in the inner city of Stockholm, yeah. having like an accepting accepting surrounding yeah. and having like um, parents and friends who are um, accepting. Accepting. Yeah. And so it, it was a choice. Uh, it was definitely a choice. It doesn't, of course, it doesn't take away the the importance of other films showing the yes. opposite because it's a it's a it's a part of the, of the transgender people's lives today yeah. that it's hostile. And, but it's also for us it was important to uh, try to show another side of it mm -hmm. to have it in a positive uh, uh, yeah. telling. Yeah. Uh, which. Uh, uh, but like it was also kind of combined with that they haven't really uh, had anything like their parents have been accepting of their yes. uh, coming out and, and, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's it's of course been combined uh, with our idea from the beginning uh, to leave it out. But also yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's actually like a generational like. Even for us, we're only six years older than Amber and Sebastian, but yeah. still it's a lot of difference in yeah. like how it was for like when we grew up and how it, how it was for, for them. So it's like that was something that we were interested in, in portraying like that new generation. Yeah. 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 Where it's also so fluid. Yeah, like so it's fluid. it's uh, it's uh, definitely more fluid than when we were growing up, and and we're kind of like almost from the same part of the city. Yeah, and uh, like also been growing up in queer uh, surroundings, both me and Hannah. So then that was also like it's it's been developing or changing so so fast. Yeah. Like yeah. for five six years, it's like yeah, yeah, it's a very rapid change. It's yeah. a very rapid social change. Yeah. Definitely. Um, this fluidity is its something that also translates very well into the visual language of the film. There are a lot of um, different textures to, to the film. There are a lot of different methods of filming. Um, can you talk a bit about this visual approach that you took in the film? Mm, yeah, we, we use a lot of different cameras <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. also like the most important part of it was like giving Amber a um, camera for uh, themselves to yeah. film. So that was uh, very important for making Amber the author of their own film as well and making yeah. Amber a subject. So it was, Especially yeah, for us important. not being trans, yeah. for us being cis yeah. and yeah. like not uh, only portraying it from the outside looking yes. in. Having yeah, Amber yeah, yeah. being a part of the storytelling of the film has been like a super important uh, ethically, uh, yeah. Yeah, ethically as aspect mm -hmm. for us. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, and then I think it also like uh, it's uh, it's become uh, definitely more messy and punk yeah, yeah. than we thought it was going to be from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like our aesthetics is maybe like from our short films that we've done before in a more like subtle, yeah. uh, slower kind of way. Yes. And when Amber like totally, with Amber's material and with like... Uh, also Amber's personality, personality and like how and Amber is filming, we had to like go with that. We had yeah. to like make the film like something... Like Amber. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it was important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that makes sense when you follow someone 
when you dive into someone's intimate space mm. so deeply. Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah, I was also wondering um, about the family relations regarding Amber because, um, of course, we see that in in her friendship with Sebastian, but later um, also in her other relationships. These are like very safe spaces where she has a lot of room for experiment to try out things and and she really has a lot of room to to find herself or find themselves in this in this whole process. Um, but then what I personally found very interesting that there is also a very safe family background. Of course, there is this trauma of of the, of the death of the father, but then there is a very strong relationship with, with the mother, which I thought was, was very interesting. Can you talk a bit about that relationship in the film? I think it, it's really important for Amber to have a supporting mother, of course. And yeah. uh, I think also like the death of Amber's father brought them closer together, of course. It's always like that when you go through some kind of a trauma. Um, and um, I don't know, it's like, they have a very nice connection and an understanding towards each other, but still, uh, Amber's mother comes from another uh, generation, yeah. so it's yeah. always like a little bit tricky to like try to explain uh, these kinds of stuff, of course, for Amber, but still, it's, it's yeah, of course it's, very important. Yeah. Um, but you could definitely feel that it just comes down to respect. Yes. Even though uh, Amber's mother might not understand fully what Amber is going through and understand, like, it comes down to respecting that uh, not understanding doesn't mean that they don't want to understand yeah. or that they don't uh, approve. Yeah. It's just uh, uh, different, different generations, really, yeah. uh, trying to uh, talk and connect. But we also, like, uh, in the beginning, uh, we didn't have Alma, the name of, like, Amber's mother, as a, uh, a really, a, a, a strong character no, in the film. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. She no. came in, like, a strong character in the ending of the editing, mm -hmm. uh, where we realized that also the, the gap between the generations yeah. could be easier to fill if we would or yeah. to like to combine them if we would uh, include her, uh, Amber's mother more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's so important because we reached out to like a different, uh, um, like different generation as well. Like we have yes. had mothers looking at this film and be like, could, like relate to Alma's uh, Char story yeah. and character. So it was it was important to have that part of uh, Amber's life as well in yeah. the film. Yeah, and I think it was very accentuated. There were a lot of very nice, mm. intimate moments when they are doing each other's hair and stuff like mm. that, which I think was was really great to show that there is there is also this supportive family background mm. there. Um, another thing that for me was very interesting that it seemingly the the film gives this feeling of um, that there is this new generation of queer people where um, identity formation is is a bit more free, a, a bit less with limitations and there is more, simply just more space for really trying out things and really finding who you truly are. Um, and I wonder how much is this something that comes through in in more like societies like like Sweden and more like in these urban landscapes or what do you think about do you think that this is more like a global and more general opportunity for for, I, for queer people today I think uh, I mean one aspect mm. of it is social media mm. and the way of connecting to each other and not feeling yeah. lonely and being the only one that feel this way or uh, yeah. experience these kinds of yeah. uh, emotions or thoughts. Mm -hmm. So the way that you're able to connect with people all over the world, uh, I think makes it a, a, a global movement forward. Of course, um, but still it's like, um, you can feel more connected, I think, with someone in another big city, someone young in another big city, than to your neighbor, because we live in such a like pol polarized and fragmented like um, way of living yeah. today. Yeah. So I think it's it's both ways. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we also sure. have uh, like more of a struggle in some ways, but also like easier way to connect uh, with yeah. someone like across the world. And yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. I also wonder why 
why was because you said that from the beginning you okay you wanted to make a, a movie about friendship but then it was also very present from the beginning that you want to talk about uh, queerness and 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 queer as as a as a phenomenon why was this particularly important to you to talk about queer and I, I guess that comes from me yes. mostly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had, I mean, like we were talking about friendship, and I had like one criteria that it has to be mm -hmm. uh, about yeah. uh, something that is queer, and okay. it's just like uh, uh, I was missing so many images when I was growing up, and it's just a, a mm -hmm. way for me and us to uh, contribute to uh, uh, yeah. queer cinema and yeah. uh, for other queer youngsters to be able to. Uh, yeah. Identify with images that they haven't seen, and yeah, yeah, that is important. I mean, since this is like a very fresh voice in queer cinema, I would say I also wonder how do you see the whole landscape of queer cinema of today, maybe especially in the light of of past times, because it's it's interesting to get the perspective of such young and up and coming filmmakers. Um, I mean, our way of of kind of handling uh, contributing to the queer cinema is to not make it a struggle being queer yeah. mm -hmm. on the screen mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, it's it's been super important to tell those stories and to have our voices heard yeah. uh, to the the others like to the society yeah. to understand that it's important yeah. for us to be equals uh, but for us uh, uh, it's been uh, uh, it, it is a way to uh, to have the movement uh, forced forward <laughs> yes. to to make mm. other kinds of stories. But still, uh, as you said before, it's very important that all the stories that have been told, I think it's like it's very important. But uh, now I've, we're in a yeah, we can like make new stories as well. It's it doesn't uh, exclude that the other yeah. stories need to be told still. We yeah. still have to remind people all the time. But um, we also, I think it's. Yeah, we're trying to like move it forward in yeah. in some ways, and I think it's like other stories being told right now that also does this. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, very important, of course. Yeah. Um, and it's really nice that Sweden, like we're a part of Sweden that has the the possibility to have like a film being government funded yes. and uh, mm. and being able to like work with this and 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 do this kind of film on a on a funding yeah. that is from the government yes. like yeah, it's uh, amazing. and and to be able to uh, um, to use that and uh, to uh, to have the the queer cinema move forward in a different direction that maybe i feel hasn't really yeah. uh, been on the screen yet yeah. is amazing. But I definitely think it will be like in the future yes. as well, like people taking control of their own authorships. Yes. Like, yes. I think it will be, we have an amazing like yeah, time ahead <laughs> in many ways yeah. <laughs> uh, for queer cinema, yes. Yeah. So you followed Amber for three years uh, and of course with this type of with these type of films, when you really get to know someone through the screen, or at least a part of their lives, um, then it's then you kind of always left at the end with this feeling that oh, okay, but what happened afterwards? Like, <laughs> like, like oh, it's like cut here, and and when you really got to relate to that person that you followed in in this 90 minutes, um, so I wonder if you are still in touch if. If there is, if there is anything that you can that you can tell us about how the story developed after after the after film the ended, oh, a spoiler. The, the final you want a spoiler? <laughs> yeah, I know. Fishing for a bit of spoiler. What we can say is that both Amber and Sebastian are here in Berlin uh, today and are coming to the oh. premiere tonight. So uh, yes. Very it's gone well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we still talk with uh, Amber on a daily basis. Yeah, we're. Yeah. I mean, now we're friends because now we don't have to be in front and yes. uh, in front and, and behind the camera. So now yeah. it's uh, developing into something else between us. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amber is doing good. Yeah, Amber is doing <laughs> yeah, really good. I mean, I think that's that's good. That's all. Yeah. All we wanted to know at the end. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I think it's very remarkable that there is a film where somebody really gets, there, there is this shared authorship within, where 
the object of the film is also the subject of the film. It's, it's, I think it's super important. So thank you for that and thank you for the interview as well. It was, it was very nice to have you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>